Arnott Community Primary in Liverpool. 63% are on free school meals and 42% on the special needs register. But it's also a centre of excellence and part of a pioneering modern foreign language project. With the requirement to deliver MFL at Key Stage 2 fast approaching, this programme shows how even non-specialist teachers can bring a new language into the classroom. Como te llamas? Como te llamas? This class is the reception children, the majority of them are four. Um, I've got um, three additional language children in the class. They all started together in September. Buenos dias, hola, buenos dias. We were doing very simple, fun things. Um, songs to teach greetings, hello, uh, good morning, or good afternoon in a fun way teaching them what is my name and the children answering. Simple responses that would be great for them, you know, a great start for them to learn Spanish. They're so young, there's no embarrassment, it's just fun, enjoyment, and we praise every good effort. And it's just great fun for them, they really enjoy it. Okay, I'm not a Spanish specialist, I um, have a tiny bit of holiday Spanish, but I am enjoying it and it's really given me the enthusiasm to continue. New games, songs and words are brought into the classroom by a specialist. In this case it's the LEA Spanish advisor, Sheila Grady. Sheila has been key to the whole project since it started in 2001. The first year the idea was that the staff would sit in on my lesson or on the foreign language assistance lesson. They would be learning Spanish alongside the children. So for the first year there weren't any great expectations of the staff. They were being taught Spanish alongside the children. The second year and following on it would just be myself or the foreign language assistant delivering two lessons and then the class teacher would follow up with one 30-minute lesson themselves. Moving from reception up into key stage one, language work can start to complement the more formal literacy and numeracy requirements. Steven, ¿cuántos animales hay? ¿Cuántos hay? A ver. Full-time Spanish coordinator Teresa Miller is working with a mixed year one and two group, speaking to them only in Spanish. A ver, pon allí siete. A ver, cuenta siete. A ver si hay siete. Siete más cuatro. Uno, dos, tres, cuatro, cinco, seis, siete, ocho, nueve, diez, once. Siete más cuatro son... They're managing to do simple sums in Spanish, closely observed by their classroom teacher, Alison Roberts. For our mental starter for numeracy, we did some maths, we did some addition, and we did some counting in Spanish. Uno, dos, tres, tres, It works quite well, it goes hand in hand, really, because the children will be doing counting in year one, counting to 20, and counting in two, so it fits in really well. Venga. Dos, cuatro, seis. Where Teresa demonstrated the counting in two, sort of one in your head, uno and then dos, tres. We try and reinforce that in maths. Yes. Um, they would do it in English anyway, but some of them actually find it easier to do it in Spanish. And I think it's the repetition that's helped them. Bueno, aquí tenemos El libro de oso polar. Oso polar. ¿Qué es ese ruido? Muy bien. Entonces yo quiero. Aiming to ensure that the rest of the curriculum is being complemented, the LEA works closely with classroom teachers to fine tune their language work.
this is now the fifth year that we've been doing uh, the scheme of work and each year we've changed it, we've made certain modifications. And really in linking in with what the classroom teachers are telling us, and especially with literacy because um, often we can reinforce the stories that they're doing in literacy. For example, you saw a lesson, Polar Bear, Polar Bear, with the Year 1-2 class. That's something that they will have done probably the previous year. We use Osso Polar because um, it's a very repetitive story and it's something that the children can pick up on and repeat. Um, and it also, the names of the animals throughout the story is very repetitive. Hippopotamo, hippopotamo, que es ese ruido? The picture cues help the children a lot to remember the order of the story. Um, we've used it for the past few weeks now and the children seem to really enjoy it. I find children who don't speak English as a first language, it, it really helps them a lot because they're sort of on an equal footing then with language because everybody's learning Spanish as a new language and it sort of gives them a bit of confidence to help them to join in in other lessons. Zebra, zebra. Teresa gives a short, concentrated lesson every few days, and Alison will then try to use some of the ideas herself during the week. We do try and join in in class, and whatever Teresa or Sheila does in class, we try and do a little bit more in the week. So we'll sort of, you know, redo the lesson, but in our own way. So if Teresa has done about the animals today, I'll do something else later in the week about the animals and the story. Es el ruido de una morsa. It is very repetitive, but it's not by rote because we don't just use it in that context. We take it out and we use the animals in other contexts. Like we've, we've done work in maths for, for uh, about Osso Polar. So they're not just sort of repeating everything that they hear, that they have an understanding of what they're saying. ¿Quieres contar? Uno. They're actually engaged in their learning. The, the activities are very get up and go and, and involving the children a lot. They're not just sitting and listening and repeating everything they've, they've, been, they've been told. They're joining in and they're, they're sort of active participants in the lesson. So a modern foreign language can be made to complement existing schemes of work at Key Stage 1. Embedding it throughout the school seems to help. And as the children's day becomes more organised, classroom routines can be in the new language too. Hola, buenos dias. Hola, buenos dias. Pauline Quinn teaches a split year three and four class. Emma. Hola. Hola. Aaron. Hola, buenos dias. Muy bien. Tom. When they come into key stage two for year Muy bien. three. Well, they find it really hard at first, mainly because it's become more uh, prescribed. They need to sit down. It's more formalised. They have to realise there's more things for them to learn. They do have to settle down. Vamos a decir, hola, señora Quinn. Hola, señora Quinn. Foreign language assistant Lucia Abalos is on one of her flying visits. ¿Qué tal? Uh, estupendo. She spends time in five different schools across Liverpool. Lucia brings a bit of fun, a bit of um, enthusiasm into the lesson. ¿Dónde vives? Vivo en Liverpool. Muy bien. She will come in and she will um, introduce whatever the subject is. <laughs> she makes it more exciting and she's teaching us different things through different methods. ¿Cuántos años tienes? This term it is about greetings, basic greetings to, um, to the children. Um, what is your name? Where do you live? How old are you? And then the next term we move on to a different subject. It could be through um, the weather, um, if you're going abroad, how to order food. David. Uh, naranja. Naranja. Si sí or no? Si. Sí. Si. Sí. Sí. Muy bien. Estupendo, David. Pauline wasn't always so confident about MFL. What did the school do to help? Oh, no. sí. We were um, informed in a staff meeting that modern foreign languages will be introduced to the school. So we all instantly went, well, I'm not doing that. Oh, gosh, no, I don't think I can do that. Um, and it is frightening. It is scary. Erin. 
I think it depends on the actual teacher as to how they feel about the subject but we were given lots of support we used to have the uh, odd staff meetings where we would have um, half an hour of Spanish which really did help basic basic Spanish to introduce us to the um, basics of Spanish literally and we even were given um, a CD-ROM for our own use to go home with um, a book to accompany that which again I do get out and I do use you know if I need to check up on something Un lapiz Repite, 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 see? Un lapiz. Un lapiz. Today, Pauline's introducing some new classroom vocabulary herself, with Luthia's support. Un bole. Un bole. See? Un bole. I won't introduce too many new words to, for them because it can be overpowering, so we just introduced just three or four words each time. Un cuaderno. Un cuaderno. Muy bien. And then we repeat, um, and then I will try, and through the day, I can't say sentences, but I will say the, the word, um, un lapiz, the pencil, un mesa, on the table. That's all I'll say to them. And they, they pick it up very quick. Un libro. Un libro. Sí. But are they actually learning, or just playing memory games? Obviously, memory does play a large part in it, but... But no, no, I don't think it is just memory. Children love to learn. And if you make your lesson as interesting as possible, finding a thousand and one ways of how to teach them Spanish, I think this is where they learn more and they do enjoy us. What have we got first? Luna. If anything, the children will help the teachers. If you say something wrong, they will pick you up. Um, so you can't get out of that one. You have to actually say... Mrs. Quinn's got that wrong. How do you do this? How do you say that? Domingo, sabido. Mm, that's not right, is it? No, not right. To actually integrate it into the other subjects is easy at first. It's the best way to do it, really. Um, then you don't feel as if you're being totally overswamped by, oh, gosh, not another subject to... Because you do it first, you, you really do. But once you start to integrate it, um, it becomes more natural to do. Um, like, I'll uh, use it in PE, um, Again, cross-curricular through geography and P, given directions, um, science. I'll actually try and do, use it through this way. Very much cross-curricular. Which is next? Aaron? BNS. BNS. We basically looked at the schemes of work in the primary curriculum to see how we could be teaching the language but also reinforcing what was going on in the classroom. I think that the language actually fits into the curriculum very easily. The types of things that they would learn when they start in school, we do nursery rhymes, we do little songs, we teach them the colours. The schemes of work that they're already following, you know, the literacy, the numeracy, we can do it in the modern foreign language at Key Stage 1 and at Foundation. I think Personally, the younger they are, even in nursery, the younger they are, the more they soak it up. And really, up to the age of five, they just, they're a sponge, they will just soak it in. They will remember. So these are the children that really will remember. And as they go through the school, they'll just be brilliant at it by the time they get to year six. Mm -hmm.